it really feels like Matthew Wade is being not mistreated, but not well looked after when he plays in the Australian One Day International setup, because it is very unclear exactly what his role is meant to be in the eleven. Because he is actually not a slogger, but rather a stroke maker, and he likes to spend time in the middle building up an innings to get runs. When he plays for Victoria, he will either open the batting or at three or four. So he likes to spend lots of time in the middle. In the Aust Australian domestic one day competition, he has scored many hundreds. And so it's clear that he is. He likes to, you know, bat properly, similar to uh, Tim Payne. It's about batting as high up the order as possible in order to really become a stroke-making uh, big run-maker. And yet, Matthew Wade is often batting at number seven in Australia, which means that he'll only have a couple of overs to bat, maybe 20 balls at most, and he just does not have the time or freedom to really get into an innings or of any type, which is unlike James Faulkner. James Faulkner has the ability of hitting boundaries right from when he comes in, and that's not what happens with Matthew Wade. Matthew Wade is not a big slogger, he's a stroke maker. And so it makes sense to have Faulkner batting that low down the order, but it doesn't make sense for Wade to do so. And when you look at what happened last summer, in the 2016-17 summer, Matthew Wade scored a one-day international century against Pakistan because Australia lost many wickets early on, which allowed Wade to have the time in the middle to build up and to score a century. And it was a great achievement. And so why don't they just try to get that to be repeated by having him bat at five in the batting order? He probably can't break into the top four, but there's no reason why he shouldn't bat at five or six rather than seven. Because it's just unclear what Wade is meant to do. He has a batting average in one-day internationals in the mid-twenties with a strike rate in the high seventies, and I think that reflects of the situation, because he's neither batting really fast to score quick runs, and neither is he batting a long time to score big runs that are much slower. So he's just stuck there in the middle. It's not clear exactly what he is meant to do, and he is suffering for it. And what exactly will come of this, I don't know. But regardless, the temptation of just get ri getting rid of Matthew Wade and bringing in someone else is always there. But exactly who that could be, I'm not sure. You'd have to think about it for a little while. But there was a example of a cricket administration sabotaging a player's career by dropping him to make him confidence, then bringing him back in so that he can fail, and then dropping him again. Glenn Maxwell just has been really badly treated, despite the fact that he has quite a good record throughout One Day International Cricket. He's done a lot of great work. Um, he's been treated like an outcast, just because of a few scores, and he's not being given an extended run to rebuild and reclaim his one-day international career. And so it's really been a bad go by the Cricket Australia selectors to not um, give Maxwell the short end of the stick every single time, and to just let him do what he feels natural to him, because Glenn Maxwell his head gets in the way of his stroke play, and so if you just leave him alone, let him do his thing, he will come off more times than not. And that's what Australia wants. They don't want Glenn Maxwell to essentially 
become, you know, Steve Smith Jr. They want him to be Glenn Maxwell and let him. It just doesn't make any sense that they would allow this, allow him to keep misperforming, bad, get out early, badly performing, and then lose his confidence, and then get out again, fail again, and then eventually get dropped, and he has to go back into the state system. At a time when Glenn Maxwell is trying to establish his test career, he has a test century against India, and he didn't do much against Bangladesh, and he probably will be in the ashes, but exactly what role would he play, and when he, what type of performance can he do when he's underconfident? Because he'll be probably in the starting 11, and yet, what exactly the role he is going to be assigned to play when he is going to be badly underconfident is capable of? It's a real open answer question of exactly what he is going to be assigned in this Ashes setup. When he's been dropped from the one day national side, he hasn't got any big runs under his belt, he's been badly performing for Australia in one day international cricket. And you expect him to do really well in this test series? Uh, Australian cricket selectors really seem to be mismanaging this. Um, and if Glenn Maxwell badly performs and Australia do worse in the action than they would have expected, they should be blamed for it. The selectors should be blamed for Glenn Maxwell's woes.